Yeah. Would you like some tea? Let me make you some tea. Some green tea. Juliet, it's late. Let's go to bed. Got you something. Thanks. All we had was Christmas paper. It's nice. Did you do it yourself? Yeah. Took me 45 minutes. It's very sweet. Are you feeling any better today? I guess. Still not sleeping, though. I'm almost out of it. Do you mind picking some up on your way home? You know, it's been almost a year since Melanie died. I don't think those things help you very much. Are you sure you want to keep taking them? It helps. It's better than nothing. Have you given any thought about New York? Uh, they want an answer by the end of the week. I haven't thought about it, really. I'm sorry. Well, I think it would be good for us to get away. Everything reminds us of her. We could use a fresh start. Jeff, can we talk about it tonight? Sure. You should at least try to get out today. You have to get out of the home somehow. I'm sorry, you know, that I'm like this. I'm sorry. Stop sorry. that. I'll see you tonight.
remember? <laughs> remember to keep pedaling, okay? Otherwise you'll fall. Okay. Wait. Like that? Okay. Okay. You were doing so well. You almost did it by yourself. You did. I can do it for a little while, but then I want to down. It's okay, you know. You wanna try again? No. You are almost there. No, you can do it. You know, we all fall sometimes. Me, Daddy, everyone. But what counts is that we will back up and we try again. Okay. What are you? I'm tough. And what else? I'm strong. Do you want to try again? Yes. yes. So, how was your day? That's fine. How was yours? You know, the same. <clears throat> I got your pills for you. Thanks. They said uh, that should last you a month. But if you want a new prescription, then you'll have to go back to the doctor. Okay. They, um, they keep asking me if I'm taking the job in New York. What do you tell them? I tell them, you know, that we haven't decided yet. That we're still thinking. I don't want to leave, Jeff. Well... <clears throat> Something has to change, Juliet. We need a change. We can't live like this. And you've always wanted to live in New York. It would be perfect. All I have of her is here. Sometimes it still feels like she's playing in the garden or taking a bath. That's the problem. That's not a problem. That's our daughter. I'm happy for you that you moved on, but I haven't. I haven't moved on. but we can't live like this. This doesn't work. It's no kind of life. Something has to change. You go if you want. I'm not living here. <sighs> then let's actually make a life here. Why don't you start teaching again? You love teaching philosophy. Teaching. Do you remember what I taught? The meaning of life. Look at me. Do I look like someone who should be teaching a class on the meaning of life? To stand in front of a bunch of college kids quoting Taoist and Buddhist philosophers? Find me a class on nihilism, maybe I'll teach that. You're not a nihilist. You know that life has meaning. Life can have purpose, and it did. What they don't tell you, though, those brilliant philosophers, what they don't tell you is that once you find your purpose, your raison d'être can be broken. Life can have purpose. Like, this glass is a purpose. It's beautiful. It was crafted with care. serves its purpose wonderfully. What's its purpose now? 
It's not even a glass anymore. It's shattered. You can't put it back together. It has no purpose now. All it can do now is cause pain. I'm sorry, Jeff. I can't leave here. I'm going to go. Try it out for a little bit. Will you be back? Yes. I'm not sure when, but yes. I'm hurting as much as you, you know. Please don't think I'm not. <laughs> She's our little girl. She always will be. <laughs> Hello? Jeff? Hello? Is anyone up there? Whoever is there, I'm coming up. It seems but a, a very brief span. I know there is someone up here. Yes, the interview.
Don't be afraid. I'm not going to hurt you, but you need to come out of there. Are you hungry? When was the last time you ate? Don't move. I'm going to get you something to eat. I'll be right back. This should hold you until morning. I'm just going to leave that here and go downstairs, okay? I'll be back in the morning. My name is Juliette. Don't be afraid. You're safe here. Are you still here? I'm here. What's your name? Anne. I'm Juliette. I know, you told me last night. Of course I did. Are you okay? Yes, the food was very helpful, thank you. I'm terribly sorry about last night. I was worried you would turn me in, but you didn't. I was quite frightened, but I'm better now. Good, there's nothing to be afraid of here. How did you get in here? Where do you come from? Looks to me like there's only one way in or out. Yes, but what I mean is, why are you here? We're in hiding. We. Oui. Are there others in here? My family. We've been hiding in this annex for quite some time now. I don't see anyone else in here. I don't know what happened. I woke up and they were all gone. I don't know where they are now. I'm afraid they've been taken. And. That's not true. I need you to tell me the truth. I am telling the truth. I've been living here for years. I wouldn't know if there was a family living in my house. Well, attic. you didn't know I was here until I was a fool and turned on the radio. Where did this come from? And, and what was it that you were listening to? I was turning into the BBC. The BBC? What for? For an update on the war. The Allies have been progressing so quickly since D-Day. We are hoping to be liberated soon. D-Day. You're talking about World War II. <laughs> well, of course. What else would I be talking about? Why don't you come downstairs with me? I'll call someone for you. What is your mother's phone number? <laughs> we don't have a phone. We're in hiding. Fine. Just come downstairs with me. Why don't you have a seat on the couch? I'm going to eat breakfast. And what are your parents' names? I'm going to try to find them. Edith and Otto Frank. Frank? Yes. Your name is Anne Frank. 
Yes, Annalise Frank. Anne lies, I might believe, Anne Frank, I don't. But that's my name, why would I lie? I don't know, but either you're telling me your real name or I'm calling the police. No, no, you can't call the police. Then tell me your real name. You promised, you promised I'd be safe. And stop, Anne, please. Please, it's okay. Please, calm down. I won't call anyone, I promise. Everything is going to be fine. I'm not a liar. It's all right, okay. Please don't turn me in. I won't. I'm so tired. I can't anymore. I just can't. Please come with me. Come with me. You can sleep in here. This is quite a nice bedroom. Yes. Thank you. Whose bedroom is this? It's my daughter, Melanie's. It was my daughter's. Something happened to her? She died. I'm very sorry. These are very difficult times. There's so much misery in the world, but we must not focus on that. We must think of all the beauty that still remains. I can't believe I'm getting pity from Anne Frank. Pardon? Nothing. You can sleep in here. I'm going to try to get some sleep as well. I didn't sleep at all last night. I hope it was not because of me. No. No, it's just insomnia. I can't remember the last time I slept. But it has nothing to do with you. I'm going to get some towels if you want to wash up. A bath? Would it be too much to ask if I could take a hot bath? A bath? Of course. I'll get the towels. I started the bath for you. Thank you very much. I appreciate you being so kind to me. It's no problem. Okay. Thank you.
hello. Well, hello. What time is it? About 11.30. You weren't kidding about being tired. Well, it has been very long since I slept in a bed that comfortable. Any good dreams? I don't know. I don't usually remember my dreams. Seems like for years I've had to wear clothes that are too small. Now I have clothes that are too big. I'm sorry, I don't mean to sound ungrateful. It's fine. Really, I'm very thankful. I should not act so ungratefully. Don't worry about it, Anne. You should loosen up. Tell me about yourself. I don't know anything about you except that you were living in my attic and that you snore in your sleep. I do not. Oh, you kind of do. I most certainly do not snore. Either you have a pig living with you in my attic or you snore. Well, I told you I was tired. So out with it. Tell me something. What would you like to know? I don't know. Let's start from the beginning. Where are you from? Well, I was born in Frankfurt, Germany, but I don't remember much of it. We fled to Amsterdam when I was very young. Right. From the Nazis, right? Yes. Hitler and the Nazis has just come to power and father is very concerned. So we fled to Amsterdam to be safe. There's a lot of hostility towards us Jews, even back then. But we never believed it would come to this. How terrible for you. You must have been very scared. Well, not so much back then. As I said, I was still very young, and mother and father mostly hid what was happening from Margot and I. Margot's my older sister. She's smarter and prettier than me, and I do very well to be more like her, I'm told. Oh, in any case, no, I was not scared then. I actually had a very happy childhood in Amsterdam for a long time. I guess. When you're a child, you seem to find joy in any situation. Was your daughter a happy child? Yes, she was. She was always smiling. It's like she couldn't stop. Sometimes I tease her saying, Now, let's get serious, so wipe that smile off your face and let's get to work. So start laughing even more. She sounds wonderful. I think I would have liked her. You would have. It's nice to talk about her. Helps to remember. Sometimes it feels like she's still here and other times... I can barely remember her face. I wish I could sleep so I could dream about her. But nothing seems to help. Certainly not those pills. Maybe you should stop taking them if they don't work. Maybe. Enough about me, though. Back to you. What happened after you arrived in Amsterdam? I suppose things were pretty normal for a while. I went to school, played with friends, all the usual things. Once the Nazis took over, though, things started to change. It was slow at first. Jews were banned from swimming pools, movie theaters, and I couldn't even ride my bike anymore. As bad as all that was, things got a lot worse. When they started taking Jews away, well, at that point, we had no choice but to go into hiding. Why not leave Amsterdam? There must have been a place more safe. Well, by that time, it was too late. It was forbidden for Jews to leave, and if we had tried and been caught, we most certainly would have been sent to a camp. The only way for us to stay all together and be safe was to go into hiding. Father was adamant that we stayed all together. So your family left everything behind and hid? Yes, but we were fortunate to have a place to go. Others weren't so lucky. You call that lucky? You did nothing wrong and had everything taken away from you. And you consider yourself fortunate? I don't know. I mean... You never lose everything. You lose some things. Others remain. So, love all you have left. You love it all the more because you know how fragile it all is. So what then, after you went into hiding? I wish I knew. We thought we would be there for just a few weeks, but we stayed for over two years. 
One day I woke up and I was alone. Now here I am. And how old are you? I'm 15, why? I don't know, I guess I just... I thought you'd be younger. What do you mean? Nothing. I'm glad you're here, Anne. You're very sweet. And you seem to believe everything you are saying, but you must know that something isn't quite right. This is an Amsterdam stop. I went in 1945. Stop, please stop. I know there's something not right, and I can't explain it either, but I'm here, aren't I? I'm here and it's warm and I'm comfortable, and most of all, I'm not afraid. For years I was terrified if I made too much noise or left a light on, we'd be found out. It's been so long where I not have to be brave and selfless and just be myself. Can I just have this, please? And I can't just... Please, just for a little while. And I just... I can't anymore. I just can't. I must be crazy. That must explain a lot, actually. Really? Fine. But just for a little bit. And don't look so smug. Can you get into the fridge and get some eggs and butter for me, please? Can we have cheese? Yes, I suppose. Peppers? Sure, if you like. Is it all right if we have... And whatever you want, help yourself. Do you cook? Mother does most of the cooking, but I help sometimes. At least I think I help. Mother says I'm more of a bother than a help. I think I see her point. I was so hungry. I usually don't have much of an appetite, but then again, I've been eating mostly potatoes for months. Potatoes and lettuce, and often rotten at that. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, we were trying to come up with some new way to make potatoes seem fresh and exciting. But in the end, a potato's a potato. I used to be quite picky, but now I'll eat most anything as long as it isn't a potato or lettuce. Okay, so no lettuce and no potato. Got it. What about you? Me? What do you like to eat? Uh, I don't care much. I guess we used to have crepes a lot with Melanie. She loved to make up her own feelings. Experiments, she would call them. Marshmallow in a crepe is surprisingly good. Popcorn, not so much. But I give her credit for trying. She loved watching movies and eating popcorn and in a crepe she thought it was even better. I don't recommend it. I adore movies. I haven't been able to watch them, of course, but I follow all the actors and actresses in the magazines. Oh, you must miss it very much. Yes, but it's not so bad. I've had plenty of books to read, so I'm not lacking stories. What I really miss is the nature and being outdoors. In the annex, there was one window we could sometimes look out and see a chestnut tree. It was the only nature we had access to for a while, and it wasn't much, but it was enough to bring some hope and comfort. We can go out in the garden tomorrow if you want, and have a picnic.
Aren't you cold? Oh no, it's just perfect. Even if it were snowing, I would still be here to feel the grass between my toes. Mm. <laughs> I forget how peaceful it can be here. It's wonderful. I'm gonna get a blanket inside so we can sit on the grass. Do you need anything? So, so, how are you doing with all of this? Very well, thank you. Oh, it's wonderful to be outside. Well, yes, but I meant, how are you doing with showing up magically in my house without explanation? You seem to be taking it in stride. I suppose. I don't know why we feel the need to have an explanation for everything. I'm here, that's all that matters. You must be curious. You must be wondering what has happened to you. I used to be that way. I wanted an explanation for every little thing. And if I couldn't get a good enough one, I wouldn't believe it. But that doesn't work. I thought it would be impossible for people I've known all my life to suddenly want us imprisoned or even dead. But that happened. Once it did, I thought certainly people will not stand by and just do nothing. That was certainly impossible, but that happened too, whether I understood it or not. Eventually, you just come to accept that if something happens, it happens. One day, I woke up in your attic. That happened. Now here I am. Like Shuangzu. Who? Shuangzu. He was a Chinese philosopher, a very brilliant man. One of his most famous parables is the butterfly dream. Once, I dreamt I was a butterfly, fluttering here and there, to all intents and purposes a butterfly. I was only conscious of my happiness as a butterfly, unaware that I was wrong to. But then I awakened, and there I was myself again. I don't know if I was then a man dreaming I was a butterfly, or if I am now a butterfly dreaming I'm a man. Yes, exactly, like Fong Zhu. <laughs> you are very wise for such a young girl, you know that? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's kind of annoying. <laughs> <laughs> I've been told. You're taking all this pretty well, too. Actually, you are freaking me out. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you learn about Fong Zhu? I've never heard of him. I was a philosophy professor. I taught a class on the meaning of life. I studied these things all my life. How wonderful. Will you teach me? I don't think I'm qualified anymore. Please, I'm sure I would learn so much from you. I have a few books I can give you. Maybe you can read them and you can discuss it. Thank you. Don't mention it. No, really, thank you. These past few years, well, it's been hard not to lose hope and wonder sometimes if we made a mistake going into hiding. If it would have been better just to have been taken quickly so we wouldn't have to endure despair. But being here and seeing, seeing the sun, the sky, and the trees again, just this has made it all worth it. What if you didn't? Didn't what? Hypothetically, I mean. What if you had been captured after hiding and enduring all that misery? If you knew that was going to happen, would you have wanted to live all these years of misery? Or would it have been better to just be dead and not go through all of that? Hypothetically. What? I don't know that I could say. It wasn't all bad in the annex. We had our moments in which we forgot our situation and found joy. There weren't many, but we had them. 
but to know there's no hope for me. That I would never have the chance to pursue my dreams, to see the world, or become a writer, or anything really. I've always wanted to do something significant. You know, something that mattered. I don't want to be a nobody who was here and then gone and have no impact. No. If I knew that there was no hope, I don't think I would want to go through that. Can I ask how your daughter died? Going inside. Let me know what she needed. What is that? It's called a Buddha board. You paint on it with water, and as it dries, the painting fades away. It's supposed to help you to not get attached to things, to let go. It's nice. Does it work? I don't know yet, but it's relaxing. Please don't take offense to what I said earlier. I know I can be very insensitive sometimes. Let's just not think about it. No more doom and gloom. Let's just have some fun for a while and let's not think about our problems. Deal? It's a deal. <laughs> so. Let's talk boys. What about them? I don't know. Have you ever had a boyfriend? Well, in school I had many admirers. I don't want you to think I was promiscuous, but boys were always quick to fall in love with me. I was very popular. Yes, and humble too. <laughs> oh, I don't want you to think I'm <laughs> conceited. Father says I am, but I'm not. A little vain perhaps, but not conceited. So you haven't answered the question. Well, those admirers don't count. I was too young for a boyfriend, but don't think they didn't try. No, I'm sure you had to beat them away with a stick. There's Peter. I suppose he would count as a boyfriend. Hmm, tell me more about Peter. I didn't love him, if that's what you're thinking. He wasn't hiding with us, him and his family. He was my first kiss. <laughs> my only kiss, really. He was nice and handsome, I suppose. But he had no desire, no ambition. I thought I loved him at some point, but he was the only boy close to my age I saw for two years, so I don't know what I feel about him. Close your eyes. What about you? Me? Boys? Oh, well, men, I suppose, in your mm. case. My husband was a good man. I mean, He's a good man. I have nothing bad to say about him. So what happened? Where is he? He left to New York for work. He left you? No, not exactly. Don't you love him anymore? It's complicated and adult stuff. I'm not a kid. I know, but we said no more doom and gloom, remember? Okay, let's stand up and look at it. It's okay, Anne. 
I know, it's just... You can make noise here. No need to tiptoe around. There are no Nazis coming to take you from here. I know. I want you to do something. I want you to yell. Yell. Yes? Okay. Ah! Louder. Ah! Like this. Ah! ah! Louder! Ah! <laughs> Screw you, stupid Nazis! Screw you, stupid Nazis! How did that feel? It felt good. Let's have it. You look very pretty. Thanks. You like the makeup? Yeah. So, how is the writing coming? Not bad. I'm out of practice. It was hard at first, but it gets a bit easier every day. When do I get to read it? When it's finished, if then. I'm not sure I want people to read it. I thought you wanted to be a writer. How do you expect to be a writer if you don't let anybody read your work? I do. I'm just worried I'm not good. You're good, Anne. Believe me. So at least tell me what the story is about. Well, it's about a nosy woman who guess what she has coming because she can't mind her own business. Fine, fine, have it your way, but know that reading those books doesn't make you a philosopher. You have to come up with your own ideas, your own writing, and you have to let people read it. All right, all right. <laughs> Finish your writing. But uh, don't forget your chores, though. This isn't a hotel. I won't. And you should put some sunblock. I don't like that stuff. You are here all day, every day. You're gonna get sunburned. I haven't yet. Fine, but it's almost time for your lesson. Do you do your homework? The Book of Job? Yes, but I told you I already know that story. Right, so tell me about it. Job was extremely virtuous and pious, and so was well rewarded by God, who saw to it that he wanted for nothing. One day the devil approaches God and says to him that the only reason Job is so pious is because God has been so good to him, and that if he took away his blessings, then Job would curse and reject him. Right. So, what happened? God is certain that the devil is wrong, so he makes a wager allowing the devil to do whatever he wants to Job, certain that he'll stay faithful. So the devil begins by taking away Job's riches and he remains pious. Next, the devil has Job's sons killed and he remains faithful. But finally, the devil strikes Job with a terrible illness and after all this misery, he finally breaks down and curses God for his misfortune. That's a pretty good summary. So what do you think the story is about? That's easy. It's about the importance of keeping your faith in the face of adversity. That's what most people think, but I find that pretty simplistic, and I never found this interpretation to make much sense. I think you need to look deeper. So what's the answer? Give it some thoughts. And finish your writing homework. I want to read it. Juliet, I have a question. What is it? What exactly did you do to this poor teddy bear? Snibble. It was Melanie's, of course. She used to take it everywhere with her. I guess it's been through a lot. Why don't you fix it? What do you mean? You know, sew it. I don't know how to sew. <laughs> how can you not know how to sew? I don't know. I've never learned. Who knows how to sew anyways? Everyone knows how to sew. I don't. But what do you do when you get a hole in your clothes? I don't know, I take it to the tailor or buy new clothes. That won't do at all. Get your sewing kit, we'll fix it. I told you, I don't know how to sew. Why would I have a sewing kit? Do you at least have a needle and thread? I guess I took one someday in a hotel. The 
would that do? You don't have brown? That's fine. Okay, so the needle's already threaded. That's the hardest part. Now just take the end and tie it in a knot. Now take snibbles and put the needle through here. Now around and through again. Now what? Now just loop it around, but instead of pulling it tight, thread the needle through the loop, and then you're done. Actually, it looks pretty good. See? It's not so hard fixing things. What's wrong? What is it? What happened? Did you figure out the meaning of the Book of Job yet? No, not yet. Melanie was six years old. She was in first grade. If anyone was an innocent, she was. She loved her school and adored her teacher. She could never get enough of learning. One afternoon, I was driving to the school and was wondering what Melanie was about to teach me that she learned that day when my cell phone began to ring. I never answered my phone while driving, but it kept ringing and ringing. As I got closer to the school, I could hear the sirens, dozens of them. I saw parents and children running away from the school. By that time, traffic was stopped. I got out of my car and ran towards the school to find Melanie, but she wasn't outside. I tried to rush in, but the police grabbed me and held me back. They said they were still trying to figure out where everyone was. But I knew. I couldn't feel her anymore. The shooter was a 16-year-old kid who attended that same school years earlier. He stole the keys to his father's gun safe and... For weeks, they were trying to figure out why he did it. Some said he was bullied as a child, some said he was a violent video games. Others said he was just crazy. Everyone wanted to know why. What was the lesson? The fact is, there isn't one. It's the same with Joe. The lesson behind the book of Job is that you shouldn't expect justice from God because he doesn't owe it to you. The universe isn't organized around us. There is a God, he may have his reasons for these things to happen, but they have nothing to do with justice and fairness. Some say it's part of God's larger plan Maybe so. But then again, maybe not. Maybe he just made a bet with the devil that he found interesting. He wanted to see how it works out. Thank you for the bear. And for the lesson. You don't get to just do that. Do what? Just run away and hide every time it gets hard. What do you want me to do? Fixing a teddy bear is one thing, but you have no idea what this is like. I know what it's like to have loss. You think you know, Anne, but you've never- Why do we even read this stuff? What did you think when you were learning all this? This isn't for the good times, it's for times like these. You've forgotten who you are. I've forgotten. Okay, Anne, it's time you heard some things. You have to let go, Juliet. What? You have to let go. I know, but I can't. You can't just hide in here. You can't just give up. Me? What about you? What about me? You don't think you've given up? What do you think you are doing here? 
You know you don't belong here. You don't think you're hiding? I have no place to go. They'll find me and take me away. You are not Anne Frank! What? What are you talking about? Of course I am. This has gone for way too long. It's time to show you something. What is this? Where did you get this book? I... What is this? Is this a joke? And I tried to tell you, but you didn't... Where did you get this? You have no right to read this! No right! Why do you have this? Why do you have my diary? Everyone has this book in. Your story is known all around the world. You are famous. For what? Famous for what? For what? You didn't make it in. You and your family were taken by the Nazis. You died. But after the war, they What are you talking about? They found your dead. What do you mean I died? I'm not dead. I'm as alive as you are. I'm right here. I'm sorry. Give me this. This is mine. You don't get to read this. I'm sorry, Anne. I should have told you. You think you know what happened to me? You don't know anything. Four weeks. What? We spent 12 years running from them. Lost everything. Hidden in an annex only for two years. My whole life we've been doing this, and this says I died just four weeks before we'd have been liberated? Well? I don't know what to say, Anne. I thought we would be okay. If we were good people and did the right thing, it was all supposed to be okay. I was supposed to return to school. I was supposed to be a writer or actress or something. I was supposed to be something. But now I'm not. I'm not anything. Now I never will be. I need you to think, Anne. You're obviously not dead. I'm right here talking to you, so think. Think about what? What are you talking about? You need help. Help I can't give you. I should never have kept you here. I should have looked for help, but I was selfish and I'm sorry. You don't believe me? You said so yourself. It doesn't make sense. And Frank is dead. You're obviously not, so you're not her. How can you say that? Sorry, but I don't believe in ghosts. Anne Frank is dead. My daughter is dead too. They are not coming back. You must have read about Anne in school and I don't know, there are disorders, conditions that make you believe you are someone else. 
You don't believe me. I don't know much about this, but I found things. There are doctors who can help. Don't bother. I don't want your help. Dead people don't need help. It's for the best and everything will be okay. now. You remember what? Everything. You remember who you are? I remember hiding in the annex. Terrified as the car pulled up. I remember clutching my mother's arm, thinking how badly I treated her as the SS entered the building. I remember the sound of them opening up the false bookcase and climbing up those steep stairs and knowing we were caught. I remember being sent to Westerport camp and thinking that if we worked hard enough, we could stay there and be together and it wouldn't be so bad. I remember the three days on the crowded train struggling for air as we were transferred to Auschwitz. I remember seeing my father for the last time when we arrived and were separated, and my mother insisting that we eat her food even though she was so very weak and sick. I remember Margot's death, and even my own. But I also remember being alive. I mean, really alive. I remember joy and love and hope. I remember my life and how much I loved it. I have to leave soon. I can't stay. But you tried to help me, and now I want to help you too. Help me do what? Remember. Remember what? I remember everything. There's plenty I'd like to forget, but I remember it all too well. I know you tried. You tried to get me to see what was right in front of me, and I didn't want to listen. I wasn't ready, and you're not either, but I have to leave, and you have to come with me. I don't know what you're trying to do, but this isn't funny. Tomorrow morning, I'm calling the doctor. These pills. You take these things constantly, yet you never sleep. All this time, I've never seen you sleeping. I've told you I've problems falling asleep since my daughter. How come this bottle is full? I've seen you take enough things to fill two bottles and it never gets empty. What are you doing? Go ahead, take one. I finished my assignment. Thank you for teaching me. Wait, Anne.
If we are to die, it must mean we have lived. For death is the culmination of life and inseparable from its definition. There is an eternity before we were born and an infinite amount of time once we're gone. Whether we endure for one year or 100, every person lives for exactly one lifetime. What is the meaning of life? A child knows, but quickly forgets. She will remember, but she will wait for the rest of her life. And from the air there rains down upon the guilty German land a hail of fire and explosions. Dr. Bill in the war bond. Yes, we must give our men our all out financial support right away. Juliet, are you home? Juliet? Juliet? Hey, wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Come here. Come on. 